let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to go top 24 here. Like I said, Superflex tight end premium. We're going to go tier for tier and talk about some some of our differences here. So my tier one, I got Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison. Who you got in tier one, uh, Austin? Tier one, Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, and Malik Neighbors. Okay. And when you're listing, are you ranked in tier or is it just a tier and you're good? Marv is number one. Caleb is two. Malik Neighbors is, is three. And then I have, you know, a tier break after that. Yeah. But in it, that is the exact order that I would draft those players in Superflex. Yeah, I I'm, I think mine are mostly in rank in tier when we list them. But, you know, there's it's it's a tier. The interesting thing with rankings always is, 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 well, well, what are the rankings based on? Is it based on exactly how you would draft them or is it based on how you see them? And maybe, Hey, the ADP doesn't match up with this. So you don't have to draft that guy quite so high, you know, and it's, that's always the tough part about (laughs) deciphering people's rankings and tiers, which is why I like to go with tiers. I at least have a couple of interesting things I would like to point out as we go along, but right now they're really isn't any but i do think it's important for everyone to have your own rankings and tiers as you're going through these but you can use ours as a guideline for your pleasure be sure to like subscribe comment below all that jazz five star on the pod so tier one pretty standard you have two or i have i have two you have three guys i don't think there's really a, a ton dis, ton of discussion there you have marv number one you've been holding on marv number one you know all, all off season long i i i can't hate on it um, mm-hmm. I don't have neighbors in tier one. Starting off tier two for me, I got Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. So I've I've changed my tier up a little bit. I've expanded tier two. I I did just have the two quarterbacks, but I've added uh, in the the two wide receivers and neighbors in a Dunze. You know, I have I have Malik Neighbors in a tier behind Marvin Harrison, and I think Rome and Malik to me. Um, are, are neck and neck. I think Roma Dunze is going to be a great player. I think Malik Neighbors is going to be a great player. I think Marv just has the Levi's attached to his name, the good genes, and really makes it hard to, uh, you know, put down any of his value. He's been consistent with with the value. So for that, I, I've kind of ranked him a tier above. Plus, I just think he is, he's, he is really, really elite and, and pretty much a can't miss. Neighbors in a Dunze, I, I feel like a Dunze is a little more can't miss for me. But it's not it's not knocking neighbors at all. I think neighbors is a whole lot of fun. So um, hit me with your tier two, Austin. Yeah, I have 104, the beginning of my tier two, Roma Dunze, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and then I end with Brock Bowers. I couldn't put anybody else in this tier. I felt like there was a, a big, for me, like a pretty big tier gap after Brock Bowers. Yeah. I feel really good about this tier two. You know, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. I thought about putting them in tier one. I, I just I wasn't infatuated with them as far as uh, them being prospects. I, I just didn't like them quite enough to put them top tier. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I still like them a lot, man. I still think there's a, a world that exists where, you know, they could get up to tier one in yes. a few months. You know, them performing well. Right. Like they're they're not that far off. It's just um, I, I thought that these three players, you know, Marv, Caleb and Malik were were above them. Um, now, let me ask you something quick, Casey, mm-hmm. before we move on. Do you think Malik neighbors had he landed with the Chargers? Do you think you would have him in tier one? Do you think that the landing spot plays a big role for, for you personally? I, I I don't know how much it really plays a, a part. I think I, you would have to I would have to reconsider it a little bit. I just. Mm-hmm. Look, I, I think, I, like I said, it's it's no slight on neighbors at all that I don't have them in, in tier one, like like you just said. I think all these guys in tier two um, have the potential to be in tier one. Basically, for me, the way I was looking at it was it just came down to the, the value of those of those top two guys for me, I feel like are just in another stratosphere. And then the rest of those guys, for me, I think are really good players. Didn't quite l- reach that elite status for the general public and, and myself, I'm not just, you know, using mm-hmm. the general public as the only guide. Uh, but I, I have a lot of confidence in, in Caleb, a lot of confidence in Marv. And I have a lot of confidence in these other guys just because they're not in the, in the tier doesn't mean they're I don't think they're going to be uh, elite. Jaden Daniels is certainly good. I like Drake may probably more than, than most, but you have may in tier two as well, which I like you have Bowers in there. I don't quite have Bowers in there. And we'll talk about that in a second. I don't see a whole lot of difference between Rome and neighbors. I, I think both are going to be really good. You, you have neighbors in a tier above and, and why, why, uh, I think most people would agree with you rather than me. What's the, uh, 
justification of neighbors just above there just you just think he's just on a whole nother level uh yeah i could talk to you for a while about it but <laughs> um I, I just i thought really across the board neighbors uh, you know, it really excluding contested catches was was better um mm-hmm. yeah you know, i'll tell you what if there's anyone that disrespects roma dunze it's DraftKings. they have him at 675 yards this year put all your money on the over man this is yeah. not financial advice but god it just made me mad like roma dunze is not just any guy he's he's probably the greatest wide receiver three in in maybe any class we've ever seen like i that's yeah. how high i think of a dunze but casey tier three do you want to kick us off sure um tier three is a little shorter for me i have jj mccarthy and brock bowers in there i think the i don't love jj mccarthy um but i do like the landing spot um and i i do have you know i think he's a, a pretty good player i'm not a thousand percent confident in him i'm more confident in in brock bowers than jj mccarthy but it's super flex we got the quarterback and we got a really good landing spot and i trust the the head coach and the system that he just that jj mccarthy got placed in i have a lot of faith in that and i you know i just think the value will be pretty insulated i think sam darnold should start i think he should start for you know at least half the season if not the whole season this year Uh, and i'm fine with that there is there is a lot of talent with JJ there's there's obviously he's a winner didn't get to see it on full display because they were quite frankly just a wagon they were they were a tough team and he didn't you didn't need to Mm -hmm. see a whole lot of JJ but you did see a lot of really good things from him Um, so I don't have him up in that next tier but I do have him a tier below and then Brock Bowers the only thing potentially keeping Brock Bowers out of that tier that you had him in for me is that I think Brock Bowers you know is is awesome and a really, really good player, but he's definitely more of that wide receiver mold (laughs) of the tight end than your traditional tight end. So I feel like the system and the people who are using him really need to get it right for him to really get into the pool of potential. And you could say that just about anybody, but it just feels like Brock Bowers is really special, but the usage and and how they're doing it and, and how they're creating things for him, I think needs to be you know, right on. And I think that's what's keeping me down because I don't have the utmost confidence that the Raiders will put him in that position moving forward. But this is dynasty, just like, you know, Roma Dunze might be buried as the three over there for a year. And and neighbors, you know, I think could potentially not fully blossom into into what he could be because of the situation that he's put in, or he may just be a hog and just absolutely crush. But Bowers, I think, in a similar situation of, you know, we don't exactly know what we're going to get with the Raiders, with this offense, how they're going to use them. The draft capital is good, and, and I like the player a lot. I just feel like he's got a very s- specific way that he should be used or needs to be used for him to really hit that full potential. Uh, and that's that's kind of why I don't have him in that upper elite tier. So uh, what's your thoughts here on the next tier? Yeah, no, I, and I understand that, man. Um, like, that's a logical thought process. I have tier three starting 108. So I have JJ McCarthy. And Casey, I like to put, of course, the whole point of tiers, at least for me personally, yes, I do have them in this specific order. But if if you want to take one player ahead of the other, like, I, right. I don't necessarily hate that. I'm okay with it. That's the point of tiers. I just sure. I just want to be clear. Because after JJ, I have Brian Thomas Jr., who I'm I'm – probably too high on i will admit that <laughs> i i fully recognize that i i like a lot about btj i'm i'm a sucker for the physical traits the speed you know just the height the weight uh he's just he, he checks a lot of boxes that i like to see man uh casey i've always been a sizeist i'm i'm never not going to be sizeist btj's uh he, he looks pretty good in 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 my rankings or at mm-hmm. least in my evaluations but so btj Xavier Worthy, Jonathan Brooks, and those players right there, that is the order I have them in, man. I'm telling you what, though, Jonathan Brooks is, he's kind of creeping up. When we talk again, you know, next week, whatever, later, later in the summer, I'll, I'll tell you what, I can see Jonathan Brooks sneaking up to like that 110, 109 range. I, I think I'm going to get there with him. I'm already kind of trending that direction. And I think they're going to baby him initially. I think Jonathan Brooks will be a little bit on like, you know, of course, due to his injury, sure, on just just a little bit slower 
slower start but man you you better believe when we get to like week six week week eight week 10 you better believe that you know jonathan brooks is going to get significantly more volume player i think he's going to be a league winner though i i really think he checks that box i think jonathan brooks is is someone that you want to trade for mid-season like especially in redraft if you can Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. The final player that I have in this draft I'm sorry, in this tier is Lad McConkey. I, I feel great about Lad. I I've I've really come full circle. I'm very much in on Lad. Of course, it's and it's not even just the vacated targets. I'm talking about the prospect himself, mm-hmm. right? 3.26 yards per out run this past season. We saw how just shifty, elusive, man. He just he looked very good visually. I, I thought the film on Lad was man, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to cover him, right? When yeah. when I watch the tape on Lad, I'm like Hey man, I'm happy that's you know that that I'm happy that ain't my job. Um, but but I I thought Lad looked really good. I am I'm a huge fan of Justin Herbert, and and you know how how can you not love the yeah. landing spot, man? I I think I think the Chargers are, I think they're going to be a nice a nice team this season. But uh, yeah, Lad Lad rounds it out at the one twelve for me. Yeah, so I I I like that tier. Where the only the only difference is is I I got a bit smaller of a tier, and then my tier four would be a lot of these guys that you have. So I have Xavier Worthy, Lad McConkey, Brian Thomas, uh, Jonathan Brooks, and Trey Benson. So that tier is expanded for me. I had just the receivers in there, and I've added Brooks and Benson in there. Benson would be your thirteenth player, so that would be taking you to about two one there with that ranking. I see Jonathan Brooks being probably the most hot and heavy gaining steam player in all the rookie drafts that I've been through and been in like he he pretty much never makes it past 110 112 he's always in the first round at this point and I just feel Trey Benson should should probably have that same cachet with his name as well I think they both are going to have equal opportunities to really take this backfield over at the end of the season going into next season and have plenty of run throughout the season um, obviously Brooks is coming off the the ACL and Benson uh, has a has a great player in Connor in front of him uh, which can be a, a you know a bonus for him coming into the league and and having a, a pros pro in front of him, um, but obviously you know Connor has been excellent, slept on maybe even over the last few years, definitely. So he's got you know him to kind of get through. So both of those guys could have slow starts for different reasons, but I think by the end of the season you'll you'll really be seeing both of those guys coming alive. Um, so that's that's kind of my my tier four. And now so for me when we get into tier five, I'll I'll kind of talk about. It a little bit so why don't you hit me with your uh tier four here austin yep 201 keon coleman so this is where going from lad to keon for me personally big difference i i really like i'd be willing to trade up in my dynasty rookie drafts to go up and get lad mcconkey mm-hmm. i don't feel that way about keon coleman at 201 that's that's just my personal opinion a lot to like about keon don't don't get me wrong there's a lot to like but he is he's definitely polarizing. Uh Keon Coleman 201, 202 Trey Benson. Again, Casey, I think he, I think you nailed it. You know, you're seeing Trey Benson kind of climb up the rankings. I wouldn't be surprised if if I bump him up to like the 201, 112. It, it wouldn't surprise me because mm-hmm. a lot makes sense for Trey Benson to succeed. You know, the situation, him as a prospect, his size, his speed. There's there's a lot that, you know, again, I find very appealing about Trey Benson. I liked him at FSU. 203, I have Ricky Pearsall. Now, these wide receivers that I'm about to talk about, I think they're really, really close with one with one another. It's it's almost difficult for me to rank them, but this is this is what I feel most confident with. It's Ricky Pearsall 203, Xavier Leggett 204, and Jalen Polk 205. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually most worried about Xavier Leggett in this group. I really feel more confident in Pearsall and Jalen Polk to hit over Leggett. Uh, again, Xavier Leggett just I think he's got that upside that truly does exist that that we saw this past season. We may see it in the NFL. I don't necessarily think Jalen Polk or Pearsall quite have that high of an upside, that high of a ceiling, but I I do think that their floor is safer. You know, just 
that just just from my evaluation, just you know, really the film, advanced analytics, just just everything in my process that that's really persuaded me to feel that way. Uh, but after Jalen Polk at the two hundred five, I have I have another tier break. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go two in a row here to kind of catch up with you, um, mm-hmm. as far as the amount of players, because um, I got a short tier here, and I noticed that you didn't have any quarterbacks in that next tier. So correct. I'm gonna go into this next tier. It's tier five for me. I got Penix and Knicks, and then that's that's the tier short tier. For me, this was close to being expanded into that tier four. Penix and Knicks are just our quarterbacks. They got the draft capital. Penix, obviously, I love. Was a big fan of him coming out. I I, I caped for, for Penix all offseason long, and it, and it really worked out. So some people are probably being like, Casey, why are you so low on this guy? And it's like, I'm not low on him at all. I basically, at the end of the day, it was I, I got to take a victory lap because I was right. The NFL <laughs> felt, at least one team felt the same way. You know, I, I kind of did, but... We, we may have to wait a year or two to see what's going on. And Penix is still high for me. It just all those guys above these guys have almost consistently <laughs> always gone in front of them and just have more value right now. Whereas Nick's kind of some people like Nick's and some people like Penix, but, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a, a house divided there a lot of the times. And Nick's, I think, really got a good landing spot for as far as fitting his skill set. So uh, I think both of those guys can be successful. Uh, but to be in the end of the first, early second, and still be getting able to stab on uh, good potential there. Penix feels really insulated with his value. And Knicks, I can't see any way that Stidham is the starter moving forward. You just got to throw Knicks in there. I think he's a really good fit with Sean Payton. Just kind of death by a thousand paper cuts and then shot, shot, shot. And I think I think that's uh, what Bo Nix does best. That's kind of exactly what we saw at Oregon. And I think that's what Sean Payton can do. Uh, with Knicks here so I had both of those guys both of the quarterbacks there they were close to making tier four for me because I do think you know quarterbacks get obvious are one of the better forms of currency in Superflex of course I just wanted to put them in their own tier and then tier six for me a lot of the same guys you had I got Ricky Pearsall Keon Coleman A.D. Mitchell uh, Xavier Leggett Ben Sinnott um, mm-hmm. and then I did have a tier break of, of Jalen Polk, but I think he might be in this tier for me. And we can we can maybe discuss that for a second. To me, this comes down to being like a really risky. This is like a lot of upside, but a lot of risk associated with all of these guys. I think you said big tier gap between Keon and, and the lad where you had that that 12 to one gap, essentially. And right. I'm assuming there's some of that. Uh, in there is that you know I like Ricky Pearsall I like Keon Coleman I like A.D. Mitchell and I like Xavier Leggett and I like Sinnott. Sinnott feels kind of the safest to me in there uh, especially tight end premium which is what we're talking Mm -hmm. Uh, but that the rest all all four of those other guys have fun ceilings but but some floors that could really fall out from under you and I feel like the general public kind of has you know also a lot of sour feelings towards them in one way or another so the court of if things don't go well for any of those guys the the court of public opinion will fall out of favor very quickly i think for a lot of those guys that's kind of my tier six and let's talk Jalen polk just a little bit here um you had him at the bottom of that tier i got him potentially in his own tier or or i had tier seven here being polk and Jalen or uh jermaine burton but i feel like polk (laughs) <laughs> should probably earn the right into tier six here for me because he feels safe. And the, But that's kind of the difference between mm-hmm. those guys. It's upside uh, versus bad floor uh, outside of Senate. Um, and then Polk just seems really safe on the uh, uh, with this floor. And I don't want to say capped upside, but like the upside doesn't pull you right in like a lot of those other guys kind of have. Casey, where is Jalen Polk in your in your rankings? He's two hundred five for me. I have him at twenty one. Okay, so that would be two hundred nine. Yeah. If there's one player in this rookie draft or rookie class that is going to be a positive ROI, that that I am one hundred percent certain. I I swear I would put my money on Jalen Polk because he. I, I mean, look, man, you have him at, at late second, and we're talking about a player who was drafted 37th mm-hmm. overall. Like he was almost a first round pick. The New England Patriots literally have Demario Douglas, Juju, Tyquan Thornton, Jalen Rager, KJ Osborne, Kayshawn Butte, and and I like Javon Baker, but like it's ugly, man. You could mm-hmm. argue this is the worst receiving group or, or, or it's up there. It might be the worst receiving group in the NFL. At year's and- end, we might not be saying that because maybe Pop 
pops, and I, I, right. don't think, I think Kendrick right. Bourne's a decent player. Um, maybe right. not Kendrick sexy, Bourne but as well. decent. But and, and one of Baker or Polk hits, and all of a sudden it's, it's not the ugliest. But I feel right right coming into it, on paper. it's definitely it's definitely the most questionable. I would you know. Yeah, I mean, on paper, absolutely, man. I, like, it wasn't like he was just good for a few games last year. Jalen Polk had seven games of over 100 yards last season. You know, of course, Drake oh, drafted. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Look, I mean, and that's a fact because Jalen McMillan obviously outproduced him the previous season. Like, that's great context. Obviously, you watch every single second of film from Washington since you're from there. Um, I'm not. But from we, there. I do. I did like the dogs. Go dogs! <laughs> it's just you're. Uh, yeah, you're. You're up late, man. So yeah. I, I think the final thing I'll say about Jalen Polk. We'll move on. I mean, we saw you know a higher contested catch rate than Malik Neighbors, more receptions than Marvin Harrison Jr., and uh, you know more receiving yards than Xavier Worthy. No, I don't think he's better than those three re- receivers. I'm just pointing out like he was fantastic this season, and I've said this so many times to you, man. He had to earn his targets, obviously. If there's one player in the nation that truly had to earn his t- targets, it was, I would argue, it's Jalen Polk, you know, playing with McMillan, playing with yeah. Roma Dunze. You know, he had to work his butt off to produce. Um, so I just, I, I really think we're going to look back and be like, man, it made so much sense for Jalen Polk to, to, to draft Jalen Polk. So especially yeah. at, his, at his ADP. But uh, yes. I can I can move on if, real, if you want Real to. quick. So that's kind of, you know, when I was talking about, like, you kind of have these tiers and then you kind of have some guys where you're like, you almost need, like, a, a different color to represent those guys because, like, I had Penix and, and Bo Nix that probably could have been in four for me. But I think at the end of the day, I'm okay with keeping them out. But Polk right now is in tier seven with Burton all by him with those just those two. And I feel mm-hmm. like I, I got to put, I almost would put Polk. I think I need to put Polk in six and then like just have a note on there of like, you know, say, you know, safest out of all these guys, I could take them above all these guys and really not feel badly about it. I don't know that you have to in a lot of drafts because he seems like the guy that kind of floats towards the back. Um, and then I could leave Burton by himself in tier seven with just being like, hey, this is just, this is an upside play right through the roof. So, Go on to your tier uh, five here, Austin, because I, I think I think we're going to see a Burton appearance here. Maybe we can expand upon him a little. Yeah, and I, I just I don't I don't know where else you can get, in my opinion, a wide receiver one on a roster at the late second of your rookie draft. Because I think Polk, I really Polk, believe yeah. Polk's going to. I really believe that man. Um, yeah, he's but, a pa- uh, he just feels like a patriot, right? He feels like yeah. workman like just everything about. So, yeah, yeah. So Jason, Two, edit the graphic, baby. <laughs> 206 Bo Nix he begins by next year so Casey you said two things that were very accurate that being you know quarterback draft capital Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. I have 2627 two, two things that are accurate um, no that's <laughs> it yeah every, everything else was in, inaccurate um, you're doing pretty good this episode <laughs> um, but yeah Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. I have the 2627 so I, I get that I'm lower than consensus, but but you again, you pointed out obviously them being quarterbacks and them getting the draft capital mm-hmm. that in itself is really all you need for for them to be up pretty high in rankings. The problem is I don't love Bo Nix as a prospect. Yeah, I don't necessarily believe in him. And, and you know, we have talked about this, that it's hard for me to justify drafting Bo Nix just because of his position and his draft capital. And and while that does matter a lot. I just, at the end of the day, my evaluation, my personal thought process, I think matters more than anything else, right? That like another guy that I was still worried about that was even higher is Keon Coleman. I like Keon. I am worried about him. It doesn't mean that none of these guys can't hit um, Penix. So Penix, full transparency, would be way higher in my rankings if he was starting, if he was starting day one. And I think that's everyone's this, sentiment, right? And, right, right. And uh, of course, what I wanted to say next was maybe this isn't the best process on my end, fading him this far, but it feels like everyone's fading Michael Penix Jr., at least in you know the rookie draft based off mm-hmm. his ADP. I'm just probably fading him a little bit further, and it, it's really the fact that Kirk could be there for a handful of seasons. Maybe it's one year. We don't we don't know, man. We don't know. Maybe right. Kirk gets hurt. Hurt. Like we we just we don't know. But um, I think I think my process could be a little bit better here. But but I'm just trying to give you the background story on why I'm a little bit lower on Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. 208, I have A.D. Mitchell. Another player, wildly gifted. He's got all the physical traits in the world. I do not love A.D. Mitchell. Uh, coming from a Colts fan, um, I think mm-hmm. this is great for NFL purposes. For fantasy, man, I am. I was bummed by this. I was bummed for fantasy purposes. I, I was very happy 
for NFL purposes. Like, I just want to be very clear on that. I have Jermaine Burton at the 2-9, probably sleeping on him a little more than I should be. Believe me, I, I fully recognize uh, Jermaine Burton's ceiling. And the final player is Blake Corum at the 210. And then, and then I have another tier gap. But I, I want to touch on Burton real quick, and then I'll kick it right back to you. If we look back, I don't know, one year, two years from now, and we say, like, Jermaine Burton was an obvious smash, like, I, I would say I could have seen that coming. Like, yeah. 75% success rate versus man, 77.3% mm. success rate versus press coverage. Really good numbers, man. Like, first in A dot in all of college, er, in, in the 24 class, second in yards per reception. You mentioned it, Casey, and and there's one thing that if you take away from, from this podcast regarding Jermaine Burton, it's that, you know, once you get later in these drafts, man, you want, you almost want to draft for upside. And here we are at the end of the second. And it's like, if you want a guy with upside, you take Jermaine Burton, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I agree right there. I, lo- I love everything you said there. I think I'm going to end up having Burton in a tier by himself, tier seven. And it's just like that. Hey, baby, that's just that's an upside play who he's fun could could potentially without some off the field stuff been a lot higher drafted and mm-hmm. be way up this board and just the numbers that you just cited of being good against press man being good against man being you know just putting all those numbers together he, he some of those percentages are up there with some of those elite guys um as prospects so you gotta like what you're seeing from jermaine burton and you gotta like the landing spot you gotta like that there's some t higgins drama we don't know where he's gonna be tyler right, boyd's right. out of there gives them a guy who can do a bunch of different things with jermaine burton so It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, but but he is he is a guy, and we're we're gonna talk about this in the next show of at the at the end of it. We're gonna talk about trading twenty five firsts and and all that kind of stuff, and what what would you do? But um, I think at the end of the show, we're gonna talk about some of these twenty five guys about who you would be or twenty four guys of who you'd be willing to maybe trade in that twenty five first to to get in that rookie draft for a little bit at the end there, and uh, you know. Guys like Penix and Knicks could potentially be for me, maybe not for you. And, you know, Burton isn't going to be a guy that you would trade a first for, but I've been in a lot of rookie drafts and been trading, you know, figuring out how I can trade a 26 second to get in to the late second, early third and grab Burton uh, as many times as I can because it's just at that point, I just want to take the upside shot, right? It's the whole point, man. We play to win, you know? Right. You got your tier five in. This is my last tier. I'm at, I obviously have Burton by himself, tier seven. I had Polk in there, but we just discussed it. Bumped him up live and on show. Burton there. We just talked about that. My tier eight is Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, and Blake Quorum. I got the three running backs. So that takes us to 25, a little bonus coverage uh, for your top 24. I really like all these, all these running backs. They just kind of got bumped down because of their situation and, and where they've gone. And, and in a year, uh, look, we're playing Dynasty. A lot of this conversation we've had about Roma Dunze and Brock Bowers and, you know, we can get caught up in the here and now. But, you know, by week six, everything could be so damn different. And, and it's on some of these guys, it's going to be. Um, so don't get terribly discouraged. Like Wright is kind of, you know, if how, how do you want to look at it? Wright could be the most at replacement. He's 31, 32 years old. He's not the A-chan replacement, right? A-chan's going to be there, but all of a sudden you could have the dynamic duo of Wright and A-chan of, a, of an offense that you trust who puts their players in good positions to succeed. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd, we, everybody's talked about the contract of J- Josh Jacobs. A lot of people think it's just a one-year deal and he's going to be out of there because maybe I think personally Josh Jacobs is going to absolutely dominate this year, mm-hmm. but Mar- Marshawn Let's Lloyd go. has a good skill set. Let's go. Um, and a good and it is, is a really really uh, fun exciting player so you know back into the second early third I'm down to take the shot on Lloyd and just kind of see how that plays out I mean Josh Jacobs has been an RB1 for most of his career and I think he's going to do really well in Green Bay but we'll see how they feel about paying him and what the contract situation when once they have to dish out money for Jordan Love is and maybe they could free up some money by getting rid of him and Lloyd so I'm okay with making that play I think Lloyd's going to have a role the Packers always play more than just one guy right we, we, they always have a little bit of a rotation going uh so i think lloyd can be a standalone usage player by mid-season for you um and if there's an injury or they happen to get rid of him and quorum same thing some people just really hate Ky- kyron williams kyron williams is going to take that job and hang on to it as long as there isn't an, an injury um blake quorum's probably going to come in eat into 20 30 percent of what you know kyron, kyron williams does but you know, and Blake Corum is a really good player. They're kind of the Spider-Man meme of each other, I think, a little bit. 
unfortunately, he got put behind a guy who was putting up Christian McCaffrey-like numbers and was the catalyst of what that offense did and how it operated. And you could see that once Kyron went out, which is a great pick by them by bringing in Blake Corum. I think I think that's excellent. If Kyron misses any time, you can plug and play Corum. Their backup running back situation was hot trash. Uh, and then in a year or two, this is Blake Corum's offense. I don't want to draft Corum super high because I feel confident in Kyron Williams. Injuries happen. It's the running back position, which is why the running back has been consistently pushed down over the last three, four, or five years um, because we know that it doesn't last that long in, in a lot of cases, and there's injuries uh, kind of throughout, so you have to have you know a plethora of them. Uh, I think the Rams have done a really good job of drafting, uh, especially uh, in the later rounds, and I feel like Corum was a nice pick for them uh, just not ready to spend heavy capital. I've seen him go, you know, early seconds, mid seconds. That's not for me, but we get into the late seconds, early thirds. I'll take the shots on Corum. I like it, man. Um, my final tier I have at you, the two you big one. You're getting a lot of bonus coverage here from us. Yeah. Yeah, man. I go, you know, I wanted to cut it off a little bit earlier, but it, it just didn't feel right. So I was like, fellas, I, I, I gotta, I gotta give some bonus content, man. Two eleven, Ben Sinat, tight end Washington commanders. He is, candidly tight end two probably a little bit lower than most but uh there's there's a lot that i find appealing about his profile at 212 malachi corley 301 i have troy franklin roman wilson javon baker and then marshawn lloyd that is that that is the final tier that i have now those receivers i know i said this earlier about pierce all to get polk being neck and neck that's how i feel about this group of receivers like malachi troy franklin Roman Wilson, Javon Baker, I could make an argument why any of those four deserve to be, you know, first in, you know, amongst that group. Uh, but, but this is how I feel. I think Malachi was, you know, drafted to be, I guess the wide receiver too. Like, I, no, I don't think he's going to be the next Debo Samuel, of course, but I do think that the Jets have specific packages and a specific role that they want Malachi to play for them. Um, I think that he brings, you know, a nice skill set, you know, a, a different type of, again, just just something new that the New York Jets simply don't have. Like Garrett Wilson, of course, totally different wide receiver, totally different type of, of wide receiver than Malachi Corley. And then you got Mike Williams, obviously, you know, he's he's essentially on a one-year prove-it deal, $15 million, yeah. completely different wide receiver. So the New York Jets have, you know, a very unique group. Troy Franklin, man, I was so discouraged. I was so discouraged to see how him fall to day three because there was Casey. We, we've we've you know gone over this before. You know there was a lot of reports about him being a late first, uh, if not an early second, and for him to fall to the fourth. You know what it says? All thirty-two GMs know something that you and I don't, and I don't <laughs> know what the hell that is. Maybe. Or maybe they don't. Maybe we're the smart ones. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, it's, in, it's 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 interesting though. You see Puka fall to the fifth. You know, you see Diggs. You see Tyree Kill. You see a, a lot of these guys, and it's just like, how did all thirty two GMs miss? Yeah. Um, but uh, th that's it, man. Uh, you know, Roman Wilson, John Baker, and Marshawn Lloyd wraps it up. Uh, no right these are, for you in there. Right is the very next player. Okay. Starting the next tier for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't feel like he deserved to be in this tier. I, I guess I'm a little bit more uh, bearish on Jalen Wright, but. Yeah. yeah, man, he's a, he's a three oh five for me. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Got a little bonus coverage. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up the rankings. You can go check out Austin at Austin Abbott FF two Bs two Ts and two Fs, and you could probably find the rest of his top fifty rookies uh, on his Twitter over there. And you can catch uh, the rest of my rankings at uh, the Patreon dot com backslash the FF Dynasty. You hit the Discord, um, and I'm I got. Uh, 11 tiers down to about 42 and then i have about 50 more guys or 50 guys uh total ranked over there so you can go find that out there's a free discord there's a paid discord we got the five dollar holler of course we get three extra episodes on the patreons uh we got drafts popping up all the time we got adp that we're that we have over there ffd adp we got all sorts of good stuff we got a rookie draft kit that jason put together got all sorts of stats and information on the rookies so be sure to go check all that out and if you're not if you don't want to do the five dollar there's a free discord that you can join uh we're popping off roster reviews uh we're going to keep doing those publicly and we do some on the patreon so shoot on over there holler at your boys hope you enjoyed it i'm sure some of you guys are saying you got this guy there? What a joke. Can't even listen to this podcast anymore. Cool dude. Where's yours? Bring him over here. Shoot him in the shoot him in the uh 
in the comments there. Let me get the uh, top 24 ranking and we'll, I'll bookmark that and check. No, I won't because I don't care. Um, <laughs> Austin, great stuff, man. Appreciate you. Be sure to check out Austin's podcast at Fade Consensus. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been putting episodes out three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and then do a mailbag Friday. It's been going really well, man. So um, I'm excited. It's just the beginning, but uh, I'm, I'm pumped, man. I think it's a, I think it's a good time to start hopefully building up a strong foundation now. And once we get kicked off for the, the regular season, you know, things will be in full effect. So I, I appreciate the plug, Casey. Thank you. Anytime, man. You're, 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 uh, you're our guy at this point, and we'll, we'll do anything to, to help the personal brand out. Keep pumping out some good content with the FFD boys. We appreciate all you guys out there. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, five star if you're listening on the pod. All the new people on the player profiler platform. What up? Appreciate it if you made it this far. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.